Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Raff, and I'm here to usher you into the weekend. It is the first Friday of the month, April 6th, and I have plenty of stuff to talk about, including your first Friday guide to the downtown Missoula area, along with some other events, some flagship Friday video of the week, and a lot of news and a lot of bad weather happening <laughs> this weekend as well. So let's kick things off with uh, the pulling off the Band-Aid first and foremost. It's time for a little bit of uh, the weather. So it is currently 24 degrees outside. Welcome back winter, I guess. Um, <laughs> you have a high of 40 degrees. You have a low of 31 degrees. Uh, of course, your Saturday, you can expect that to jump up to 51 degrees, but then of course you can see those rain showers, then um, snow showers happening. Um, just kind of a mixture between 60 and 100% chances of rain Saturday. It's look like it's gonna be raining pretty much all day Saturday night. Um, Sunday, you're going to have the 80% chance of showers. Sunday, it's going to be 70% chance of showers, and we can expect more. Hope, uh, maybe by Monday, things will start clearing up, but it seems like uh, we're going to hit the peak by Saturday night with all this precipitation and rain that's falling in from the sky. All right, guys, now let's talk about some news items. So, of course, uh, MCAT is doing a local live stream, um, uh, well, uh, Facebook live stream. Pardon me. Um, in 2015, the Mon Le Montana legislature passed a law to provide a $150, uh, mil um, $150 tax credit to donors uh, supporting scholarships for private schools. Yet nearly 90% of the eligible private schools in Montana have a religious affiliation, raising concerns about tax credits constitutionality. The court will hear arguments from the Department of Revenue and their parents. And of course, MCAT, um, one of the reasons why uh, a lot of these religious uh, schools are being, uh, have, uh, have much concern is because a lot of places that are considered religious don't even have to pay taxes. So why should they get a tax credit, that kind of deal. So that's the biggest argument that seems to be the case. Of course, I'm just going to see if they're going to be talking. It looks like they are talking as of right now. So if you look at our website right now, you can see a couple of people talking and we're just going to kind of sneak in there. Just maybe get like a nice little uh, hear what they're all talking about at the Montana Supreme Court. Rural and state. We also have seven tribal court systems in each of our seven tribal governments. The federal courts are led by the Supreme Court of the United States, which is in Washington, D.C. The federal courts generally hear questions arising under the U.S. Constitution and federal laws. Although state courts sometimes consider federal law, in fact, the U.S. Constitution requires states, state courts to do so, as in the case you'll hear today. Most laws are state laws, however, and most courts are state courts. State laws and state courts have by far the greater impact on our lives. Anthony, tell us what the state courts do in Montana. Well, statewide, our Montana courts hear a thousand cases a day, hundreds of thousand cases a year. First, trial judges and juries hear those cases and decide them. Sometimes lawyers present facts, evidence, through witnesses and documents, and judges and juries decide the cases based on those facts. All right, so as you can see, um, this is, <coughs> sorry about that. This is basically just a brief rundown on what they're going to be talking about today. Um, just so you guys know, when I was there, uh, they trucked in, they bust in a bunch of high school students. So a lot of this is a big educational event for a lot of high school kids as well. So you can watch that on MCAT's page as well by going on to uh, our Facebook page, Missoula's Community Media Resource. Well, in other news, so I don't choke to death. <coughs> Our former superintendent of the state level and uh, um, and also the one who ran against Ryan Zinke, Zinke in the uh, congressional U.S. Sen um, Congress seat, um, Denise Juno, um, is running, it, it just got a job at Seattle School District. Uh, Juno was one of the three finalists Seattle School Board interviews for the job. She, uh, um, at the helm of the largest school district in Washington, Juno will be responsible for closing large uh, achievement gaps and coping with a significant budget shortfall. Graduation Matters was her campaign, which brought up a graduation rate in Montana from 81 to 86%. Of students in Montana. The Seattle Times reported that Juno will, uh, 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 will be the school district's fifth superintendent in 10 years and is expected to earn around $300,000 annually. Okay, so in NPR news, um, I got this from NPR. It's pretty interesting. It kind of gave it a nice little article highlighting the book Burger by Carol J. Adams as hit the shelves with many people looking at 
to as a gender study in the form of a double entendre of big hamburgers standing in for uh, um, male genitalia. And it is no surprise that some companies advertise as fair uh, via women who can uh, cram a hamburger into their mouth, basically. And of course, Adam's approach in her topic as an animal rights activist, as well as a feminist, she reminds us that everyday objects of a hamburger really is the burger minced um, um, ground um, is then renamed, reshaped food product further away from the animal. Of course, this talks about veg veggie burgers as well, thus avoiding the word hamburger, cheeseburger, or anything like that. It's just straight burger. According to Adams, published in the article in for NPR, um, she quotes in saying, there have been many times um, more recently than the veggie burger ends up being gendered. An advertisement in the Vegetarian Times suggests that the great thing about certain veggie burgers was that one's husband would never know. This ad reinforced several assumptions that about gender, a wife is expected to cook, the husband is expected to have meat, and you should lie to your husband that you're feeding him a veggie burger. Um, of course, it, could, it does imply that the veggie burger is our sneaky, and the only way to get them into your system is to trick your husband. So similar uh, uses uh, cloud the origin of the veggie burgers. Recipes for vegetable cutlets and bean cro uh, cro uh, crochets appeared in cookbooks in the turn of the 20th century. Even in the 1890s, food inventors with household names recognition, Kellogg Post were preparing meatless foods with Satan, um, nuts and soybeans, later meat rationally during World War II busted the kind of experimentation with alternative meat substitutes. Of course, this book goes into more details about gender study and how the uh, basically the ba basic history of w where the burger came from, even though there is not much evidence on where the burger actually came from in the first place. So I think that was a pretty interesting article and you guys should check it out. Um, most of these articles I read are just kind of like, uh, just kind of skim through and be like, oh, this looks kind of interesting that you might think that would be cool. And it's definitely worth a read um, for sure. So that's kind of what's happening in the news and around the nation for right, for uh, what I'm talking about right now. There's always plenty of stuff going on. But without further ado, I have a bunch of new programs that are going to be airing from um, here on MCAT. And then when we come back, we'll talk about some movies that are coming out this weekend. So stay with me. Uh, the object is when we get a chance to compete, uh, we compete to win. And by learning how to do those things and going to the interaction part, competing, going through some trials in terms of, of what's required of them to uh, give of themselves for the benefit of the football program, the university. They have to sacrifice a lot of their uh, their personal time, their freedom, their effort, their sweat. Uh, we have a uh, an aggressive game, and they have to sacrifice some of that. And and part of that, the enjoyment in that is is beating the opponent who's trying to do the same thing. You know, I think this is uh, I think this is a really important point, and I think you know. I'm his boss. And so you, you say, how do you balance these competing uh, imperatives? I think many of you have seen, I know there's some Grizz fans in the audience, so I don't want to have any tomatoes thrown at me when I say this. But uh, the point of our athletics programs, it's not to win games. It's not. These are key ways to enhance the development of the young women and men who participate in these sports. Ultimately, they are, athletics are about, <clears throat> are about building leadership, character traits, teamwork. The good news is, so I'm glad you didn't throw any tomatoes yet, is when you focus on that, wins follow. What are the developmental milestones that children should be achieving at certain stages of their life? They're, they're general guidelines, but uh, they were very interested in what those developmental milestones are and how we define them. Uh, so we shared a lot of that information. They're looking at ways to put those milestones into their policies, but then also into practice. Uh, who needs to be doing those devel developmental screenings? Is it the physicians? Is it the healthcare providers? The nurses? Who is it that, that needs to be doing that? So th those are the things that we're talking about in our framework. Uh, if you've ever been to Nairobi, I didn't take this picture. This is an air, an air picture. This, this is the Kibera slum. Any guesses as to how many people live there? More people than live in Montana. Uh, just over a million, about 1.2 million, they estimate, live in the Kibera slum. Uh, that's downtown Nairobi off in the distance. Uh, I was somewhere 
down in this area on the edge because the, the slum is growing. Uh, this is considered, I don't know if it's true or not, but they are very proud of the fact that this is the largest slum on the African continent. And then, but I know that there were other drone incidents, but every one of these investigations were turned over to the Forest Service law enforcement. Um, we in Montana don't actually have a statute pertaining to, uh, so we have some statutes that would apply, but not specifically for drone action or shutting down these air operations or flying within a no-fly zone, whereas the, the UMC code does the federal code. And so each one of these incidents were actually turned over to Tyler Robinson, who's the local uh, Forest Service law enforcement. But I know of that I was on one, that we detained uh, one gentleman and, and actually um, assisted the Forest Service, I guess, in their investigation. Hey guys, welcome back. Now it's time to talk about some movies that are coming out this weekend. Kicking off your movie uh, this weekend is not that one, but this one. Uh, <laughs> following the exploits of adults trying to tell kids what to do and not have sex comes blockers. Um, basically, it's a crappy movie with John Cena playing off his comedy chops from the train wreck movies, um, which I honestly don't suggest. But be warned, he'll probably be play a muscle bound softy in this movie where all the other characters are terrible people and make fun of him because he's muscular, I guess. Uh, but it basically shows their parents are idiots and trying to get into parties that they think that drinking is the only way to prevent their children from doing dem drugs and stuff. Uh, anyways, this isn't anything different from Neighbors with Seth Rogen. They even got a couple p uh, actors from that movie to be in this movie as well. Up next, we got, here's an example of this movie. There it is. That's basically it. Uh, it's basically uh, a movie about a family who has to be quiet, or their old dad pull this movie over. Um, oh, so help me. Uh, anyways, monsters are uh, killed by sound, and this family figured it out. So they don't make any sound. Therefore, they don't get killed by the monster. But when a person makes a sound, the monsters start to come in. And so basically, the family has to figure out how not to fart, snore, uh, shower, basically uh, breathe or uh, get sick and cough or anything like that or you won't be uh, killed, basically. Anyways, tell me tells where this movie goes exactly where you think it goes. Up next, we got this movie. It's not, not Meryl Streep stars in this movie about a star volleyball player who dies in a tragic accident and her BFF teammate must take up her coach's daughter's mantle and win the games and compete in the state championship. Of course, I'm assuming it's like a state B or C depending upon the school. And of course, here's the kicker. It's inspired by true events, which means not only is it ba not based on true events, but it's even more false when it says it's inspired by true events. Of course, it's mini tagline. Of course, you really can't make fun of a, a real-life death girl. Ugh. All right, that's enough of that. Ugh, I better just stop. I, 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 I did not have an out for that. So anyways, let's talk about uh, the, the Flagship Friday video of the week from uh, CS Porter. So when I come back, I'll talk about all your city council. And then after that, I'll talk about... Um, first Friday and then after that I'll talk about events and then maybe I have a couple art clips for you guys just to kind of give uh, clear the palette for you guys to enjoy some artsy stuff happening this weekend so without further ado here is flagship Friday okay so I mean pretty much how you play this game is you roll two dice which oh wait where the dice go eh, anyway so pretty much what you do you roll two dice first one's initiative which is the initiative number and the second one's like ability number and then you're pretty much just trying to get to here. This isn't TNT, this is Anime Club. We're here to watch uh, Naruto because it's the best one. That's not the best one. First of all, I don't want none of your king D and D and D. Second of all, eh, Naruto is even the best one. What about one fraction? How dare you? One fraction, one fraction is not even best. One fraction is obviously number five, at least that low. It's not as How about how about Windex? Windex. It's with the guy with 
swords, but it's better than Bleach. Um, there's also a uh, semi-metal, semi-metal wizard. We can't watch Bleach, because Bleach is just bad. We have to find an anime to watch. We watched all of the anime. We watched all of Naruto. We watched all of One Piece, which is impossible, since it's like a bajillion episodes. Well, we can always watch the Digital Masters. Yeah, we gotta find it. action, fantasy, superhero, uh, icky, uh, uh, mm. Choose an anime because this is anime club. And we anime uh, an anime club. Can I anime too? No! Hello, I'm a pickle. One thing's for sure is I was just too pretty for this world. <laughs> I'm hungry. A oh, silly hungry Larry. <laughs> How about Bay Wheels? Yeah, Bay Wheels is a great animal. Let's watch Bay Wheels. Bay Wheels, man. Bay Wheels. Go away, hungry Larry. <laughs> hungry Larry, you're a disappointment. That's all, folks. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. Now it's time for some city council. Uh, hey guys, budget committee had presentations on Wednesday, and next Wednesday they'll talk about more budget committee meetings. Most of this stuff has to do with uh, what Lee Griffin, Griffin is about to say for. These um, differ slightly from previous years. We're not doing a mid-year presentation of numbers, you know, where the number is on December 31st because those were not proving after hearing from council and managers. Those really weren't proving to be useful for folks in understanding um, the department's performance and making decisions and how it would lead into the following year's budget. All right, so as you just heard, these presentations are to help clarify some misinformation um, for some people out there um, who need to know exactly uh, where the money goes, how much money is made, the revenue, the money that's put into it, based on uh, state level grants, applications, all this stuff, all the details that happen in your departments at the city of Missoula level. Of course, um, Missoula Ch City uh, Police Chief Mike Brady gave a presentation on their budget. Um, basically, a rundown is 3% increase for school officers, which totals 5 full-time officers at MCPS. There was some budget affected by the fire season because some of the police were sent uh, out as a, uh, sent out to the fires, and which resulted in overtime. Mike Brady looks to what we can expect for increasing the police presence in our town. So here is Chief Mike Brady. The, one of the things for fiscal year 19 that we're looking at is, is our association wants to partner with us to do a staffing survey for determining uh, adequate levels of staffing for the years to come. And so right now the minimum manpower that we require on the street is has been that way for several years. There's concern that that may or may not be enough at different times. So what we are doing as part of, even if we don't do the staffing survey, we're looking at the, the day of the week, the time of the day, and seeing if our overlap shifts uh, currently from 4.30 to 2.30 are the best times for those. All right. So uh, that was basically kind of like the rundown of uh, what they need to do for the city of Missoula to, to determine even if they even need any more police officers in our quiet little town. Um, Jeff Brent, ass assistant chief for the fire uh, um, for fire operations, spoke on behalf of the fire department on Wednesday. $13.6 million goes into the fire department. State contributions from 
come from retired firefighters on the state level. Uh, revenue comes from various community educations on CPR and going out for the fire seasons, making a very cost neutral system. Uh, basically, the city can write off any firefighters who go off to fight forest fires because uh, the state reimburses the city for the firefighters that they expend during the fire season. 95% of the budget goes to personnel overall, with the 5% is used for tech upgrades and replacement costs. $250,000 of revenue were generated from the wildfire rental program. Uh, they leased their trucks out and such to the fire season as well. Uh, here's Jeff Brandt, and he talks about uh, where uh, they come up short in terms of of what they uh, what they have done in the past and some of the issues that they go into moving forward. Hazmat funding, while, while we lost matching funding at the state level, what we're trying to do of that 44,000 is come up with half. If we can come up locally or as a team, re this regional team with half of that, there's still matching funds available, but the other half was lost. What was, what dried up at the state? What specifically was the, the funding? So, Without getting, without getting too, is it used to be fully funded uh, as, as the HMEP grants came through from the federal way, we were, they, they rolled their budget into, well, now we just have to budget for half. So if the state budget's half, then they get the federal match, then that half would switch shift to the Department of Military Affairs, and that funding dried up in the budget cuts in the state, and which directly affected us. As a, as yeah, no, thanks. I just want to shine a bright light on where we've lost funding at the state that. level. So, All right, so the biggest uh, issue in terms of uh, funding for the fire department is hazardous um, training and hazardous uh, um, certification and stuff like that. So a lot of times uh, certification for hazardous waste that may spill as a result of, uh, of course, rail cars catching fire, fire season happens through here, trains go through there, and they catch on fire, and there's any kind of issue that happens if there's a derailing of a train car and there's hazardous waste that gets spilled onto the neighboring areas. And so far in Montana, I think there's, they, they said there's only six, uh, uh, six groups, uh, six uh, total in the state of Montana that have hazardous waste training. Uh, Central Services, we're up next. Steve Johnson, director of Central Services, speaks on this topic. They want to save $11,000 in their basic administration in Central Services, which is based on the current projection of grants can be much higher. Most of what they did was help the transition of the acquisition of mountain water and figuring out uh, finances for employees and water companies along with personnel costs for the city operations for maintenance and human resources because especially when you add 39 jobs to the city of Missoula it kind of kind of get kind of uh, interesting to figure out where the funding and where the money should go and how to find the right money to go to the right places even though it's pretty much uh, it's not as easy as basically okay the money that you get for working for mountain water is the same money you get when you're working for Missoula water so here's steve johnson is talking about some of the major changes in uh side of the city of missoula so here is steve johnson to an existing city budget required a lot of time and effort and integration and coordination between the various departments and lee's staff has been extremely helpful in terms of uh, making sure that uh, got done without a major hitch and uh, continues onward as we go. On, you know, and, and as I mentioned, ongoing building issues as well. IT, very involved in the transition, um, had to have computers and telephones up and running on day one to make sure that not only customers could interact well with now City of Missoula staff, but in ensuring that our billing systems had adequate tech uh, coordination and support as well, uh, both both internally and externally, uh, we had we had a lot of IT issues that we had to integrate in the system. Uh, Carl staff, Carl Horton staff, uh, replaced all the the PCs that were in use at uh, Mountain Water, and uh, literally hauled out tons of old equipment and obsolete equipment from the building over at Missoula Water. Uh, once once uh, the city of Missoula uh, acquired the system and, and got it up and running. And then obviously facilities and fleet maintenance are impacted by the mountain, or the mountain water acquisition as well, just in terms of the fact that we have uh, many more vehicles now, uh, we have uh, uh, more facilities than we had before. And so on an ongoing basis, um, continued 
those two uh, divisions continue to do a great job as well. I won't go into All right, so uh, that was Steve Johnson to kind of give you the rundown of uh, what would their major job was in the last year or so. Um, you had a whole new department with even more operations that need to be updated, but especially in tech support, you uh, tend to get a little busy after a while. Um, but of course, uh, Steve does also uh, talk about uh, some of the uh, um, departments and operations that and employees that basically helped with the transitions of these operations. So here is Steve Johnson once again praising uh, staff and members of the city. Um, I would like to s spend a lot of time just sort of bragging about the department heads that run each of these various subunits of central services. Marty in finance, Lori Fow in HR, Carl Horton in IT, uh, Scott Colwell in uh, fleet maintenance, and Matt Lawson in facilities. They, they do an excellent job um, with some pretty small, boring general fund budgets to work with uh, to get those, those missions accomplished. And also um, uh, Chase Jones in energy conservation. There's, there's a person who uh, leverages uh, resources like nobody's business in terms of being able to, to bring in help to, to serve as a coordinator and a facilitator statewide, really, in terms of energy conservation efforts. To All right. So Steve Johnson, once again, from Central Services, uh, he's the director. And uh, if you want more information, you can go to CI. .missoula.mt.us. It's the website where I get all my information for the city council reports. It's a wonderful website. It gives you a nice little rundown and also gives you uh, uh, um, tabs that put you right into the topic that's displayed as well. So you can go to this website and you can find out more about what's happening in your city in terms of politics and government. Um, well, mostly government. I don't think it has anything to do with politics. So anyways, uh, that uh, basically wraps up my city council report of the day. Here is an art clip in this the last time I'll be playing this art clip until, uh, well, the last time I'm playing this art clip, straight up. This is the uh, last art installation that's happening, I believe, at the Zootown Arts Community Center. And I, I do believe that they might be changing out for a new installation that's happening tonight because it is First Friday. So stay with me. Up next, I have your First Friday art guide. Um, up next. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back. Now it's time for a little bit of art, a night of wilderness. And I believe this is at the, um, actually, I'm not going to even guess. I'm just going to know for sure. It's Lake Missoula Tea Company. Um, first Friday, starting at 5 p.m., born in the Rockies and raised in Northwest. Am Amanda is a ceramist. I'm not going to say her last. I'm going to totally butcher it. Uh, ceramist and woodworker inspired by cold rushing waters and strong mountain women. Her current body of work uses reclaimed and recycled wood assembled into specific mountains and ranges across Montana and the West. She will be displaying these wor uh, wood paintings and pottery. Uh, Charlie Hopkin and Eric uh, Enzen of Moneypenny and Poor Henry will team up in the gospel humpers of the night of original folk, blues, and country. So you have some live music and some art happening there as well. Up next, we got places 
real or not, this is going to be at Gecko Design, which is just right next to Pie Hole, just here downtown, the city of Missoula. Gecko Designs is a basically uh, a, a basically a designing firm that designs um, posters and billboards and I believe it's uh, I think they do a little bit more than that but they're a designing firm so you can check out there and learn more about them as well clever layer um, Courtney Starrett is the assistant professor and of fine arts and director of director a digital art at Satan uh, Seton Hall University in New Jersey and co-owner of Plural Studio. She has presented her research and writings internationally. Her creative work has been exhibited across the U.S. as well as in England and Germany. Um, so basically, she is an educator with a private sector background in software development and network support. In addition to her corporate work, she developed vi uh, visualization applications for Duke's basic uh, arrhythmia lab. So you get to learn more about that, and it's Clever Layer, and that's happening at Frontier Space. Bernice's Bakery has their own art installation, and they're doing an, an employee art show. Bernice's Bakery is filled with many employees that are bursting with creativity. This show is the Bernice's staff's opportunity to share their many other talents, often not seen within the bakery walls. So you get to enjoy some stuff and maybe enjoy some pastries. Who knows? Bernice's Bakery will be open from 5 to 8 as well, where you guys get to see some of the art in there. So... Eurythmic, Eurythmic is going to be at Radius Gallery. Get into the groove of Eurythmic. Uh, Radius Gallery salutes the visual harmonics of springtime with this uh, mixture featuring Lucy Capehart with large scale uh, canopies, uh, Amanda Jaffe with uh, uh, con contemplative, oh man, that's the word I'm having trouble with, contemplative ceramic wall structure, Tim Nelson with strikingly stylized portraits, and Brooke Oliver with uber contemporary uh, ceramic vessels not the not the uber driver but it's different all right so this exhibit runs from now until first friday in um in what's what's after april may that's right um up next we got sarah Morris is going to be at La Stella Blue, and her collection is titled The Birdie Bunch Highlights Montana Wildlife and Nature Senses. This artwork will be, be available and also be on sale. So this is going to be at La Stella Blue. All of these start at 5 o'clock. I don't need to – I'm just going to repeat that a couple times. But you got Pastels by Elois Jetter, Small Views slash Large Landscapes, Four Ravens Gallery, and it opens from 5 to 8 p.m. at the Four Ravens Gallery. Then we got – Gallery 709 inside the Art Montana Art in Framing. So it's located at 709. Um, I believe it's just off of Russell Street. You, you, it's right next to the railroad. It's basically right next to the railroad that cuts through the Milwaukee Trail. Um, George uh, Gogus prints the Judith Basin Encounters. Um, so it's, uh, oh, Ronan Street, 709 Ronan Street, Gallery 709. You can go to montanaart.com or call 541-7100 for more information. Up next, we got First Friday with B. Martinez and ADT Brass. This is going to be at the Bike Doctor. So local artist B. Uh, Martinez and ADT Brass for uh, Neighborhood First Friday. It's not a bike show, maybe, for sure, a little chaos in creation. You got music by ADT Brass, some beer, belly laughs, art, and more. Last but certainly not least, Berkshire Hathaway Home Service Properties um, also does a bunch of art shows there as well every first Friday. Um, much of her work is um, formed by myth, folklore, and dreams. They, she gets ideas from uh, ethnic art, from folk tales, from animals, people around the world, and she likes to paint in um, an opaque watercolor medium and recently has been adding in a, a caustic uh, finish to some paintings. Uh, the small, uh, and of course, this is Barbara M., um, Barbara Morrison will be presenting this at Berkshire Hathaway, and of course she's had the opportunity to study with local traditional crafts, and she finds them entering source of ideas. So those are some of the um, kind of brief uh, cliff notes that you guys can check out uh, for your art walk through this weekend as well. I have another art clip featuring um, the Gallery of the Visual Arts. Um, for the next, uh, I, have the, I have two different art clips, but both of them are featured at the Gallery of the Visual Arts and will end on April 12th. So you have until next Thursday to, Thursday to check these out. And when I come back, I'll talk about all your Friday events, not just your first Friday events.
Well, don't strangle yourself on those Infinity Scarfs just yet. It's time for your first fri uh, for your uh, uh, Friday events. Uh, you got Swift Water Rescue Class. Montana River Guides host a class from April 6th to April 8th, starting this morning, right now, uh, Missoula with Montana River Guides. Um, you get to learn about Mont uh, Sw Swift Water Rescue Classes. So that's happening right now. Peep Show at the library... Uh, at the Missoula Public Library start, uh, is at 10 a.m. this morning as well. If you love the marshmallow candy blend with your passion for literature when you uh, participate in the Montana Public Library's sixth annual library peeps show. Um, Missoula Indoor Sports Arena, Mismo Gymnastics, and Rouge Acro Sports Center is doing all sorts of uh, children-themed gymnastics all happening from 9 a.m. to 12 noon. Tiny Tales and Storytime is going to be at the Missoula Public Library starting at 10.30 a.m. So you can check out some peeps before you guys head on over to Storytime, usually in the Dragon Rug on the main library floor, or you can go down to the large conference room. If it gets too big, you'll see signs if posted otherwise. Row Robotics and coding is going to be at the Spectrum Discovery Center. Learn the code to control the robots, or the robots will control you. So check that out. It starts at 11 a.m. at Spectrum Discovery Center, and it goes on pretty much as long as it's open. So that's their theme for today. Yarns and watercolor, back at the Missoula Public Library once again. You want to learn a little about stitching and making your own clothes, yarns is the place. But if you don't want to do that and you want to do some art, watercolor is the place to do it. And plus, it is First Friday. Why not get a little taste of art and do some watercolor there as well? Cribbage and Bridge is uh, some little card games and some little card game with the wooden peg things. And if you know what, you should know what Cribbage and Bridge is. You can always Google it. 12:30ish um, ish at the Missoula Senior Center. Um, check it out. It's pretty easy. It's a fun way just to play a couple card games and hang out at the Missoula Senior Center. Uh, um, homeschool sport fencing class. So. Missoula Fencing Association started at 2 p.m. this afternoon looking for a great PE activity as well as a place to exercise your student's mind. Fencing is a strategy in an um, intensive sport, good for both body and mind. It's also a great way to make new friends. Missoula Fencing Association offers a fencing class for homeschooled students from ages 9 to 17. Classes meet every Friday from 2 to 3.30 p.m. for 10 weeks. It's $130, which includes all equipment. More, inf uh, more information and registration can be found here at Missoula Fencing net so um, you can contact them for more information but if you're looking to learn a new skill you're coming back from spring break and you're just like okay I did I was lazy now it's time to get back to work um, Missoula International School is doing a Mandarin, a Mandarin Chinese class for anybody who is interested. Starting at 4 p.m. tonight and going on every week, Missoula International School is proud to present a new language club at our schools this spring. Uh, Chun Lao and her associate um, Elizabeth Pash, Paish uh, will be working. Uh, oh man, I'm having <laughs> is working with younger children on one of the foundations. I, I'm terrible with pronouncing some names uh, or reading. I forget which. Uh, children on the foundation of this Chinese language, reading and writing will be both introduced as your child enters into a new language experience. Oh, I guess the age group is from kindergarten to th third grade, and the times are 4 to 5 p.m. It's Mondays, eight weeks is $80. Fridays, it's eight weeks, $80. And of course, suggested is both days for eight weeks, so it's Mondays and Fridays at 4 to 5 p.m. for $150, which they suggest to have for both days. Uh, first Friday art show with Washington children's shelter i'm just going to say one thing that doesn't have um art related things to it but it's also a benefit for the uh children's washington's children's shelter so in recognition of child abuse prevention month and with generous support from the Bill and Rosemary Gallagher Foundation, Washington Children's Shelter presents the Face Behind the Mask art show. This unique exhibit will feature uh, art artistic works from children impacted by abuse and neglect right here in Montana. You can go and support them. It's going to be at the Dana Gallery, which is right downtown, right next to Four Ravens Gallery, and it's just off of Higgins and Main. Oh, no, Higgins and Broadway. My bad. Of course, by now, you're not all... It, you know all the art clips, and um, I'm going to just kind of throw it up and over to a, a show that's happening this weekend, this last weekend, which is Wonder Women, and at the University of Montana, Bear Bait Dance brings uh, their dancing experience. So you get to enjoy some contemporary dance, which celebrates women and their power. So it's going to be at the basement of the Part TV building, room 005. Um, and that concludes all your Friday events. Here is another art clip for you guys. And this is also at the Gallery of the Visual Arts. So when I come back, I'll talk about your Saturday events and wrap up the show. <laughs>
Hey guys, welcome back. Now it's time for a little bit of Saturday events that are happening. So if you guys are planning on going out and about on Saturday um, or even Friday night, you got to be aware that Saturday is doing winter markets uh, from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. all the way through April. Um, as it transitions into the regular farmers, I don't know why I say regular farmers market, but that's it's like comparing it. But they're they're completely different, uh, so you can compare. So, anyways, winter market 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Saturday. If you're interested in empower you, your gift to the world is at the Learning Center at Red Willow. Joan, master healer and soul empowerment coach. Joe Ray Freeman to explore your empowerment. This is a one-day workshop, um, $95, which includes lunch. And this is going to be at the Learning Center Red Willow starting at 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. So the RX Trail Program kicks off at McCormick Park starting tomorrow at 10 a.m. The RX Trail Program is a collaborative program with that partners with the medical providers, physical therapists, and many other healthcare facilities to engage in patients, increase in physical activity to combat obesity and other chronic health conditions. You can join them April 7th for the walk on the first RX Trails in Missoula. Bring a friend in good walking shoes and walk with us in McCormick Park's RX Trail. 365 Celebration Wagon indoor dog park so it's turning a year old or seven years in dog years please help them celebrate from 7 11 a.m to 2 p.m uh they start in the wagon building to build a community of like-minded pet p parents and they are so thankful to be in missoula it's a potluck you can bring some food and share new fur babies for your family featured adoptions and snuggling to be had by all pet portraits they will be taking a picture of you and your fur family and email you a copy most importantly come for the community and leave with your happy dog so get maybe a uh, glamour shots with your dog cool um <laughs> this is a free event never if you've never been to wagon you can always stop by and have some fun pre rigid Registration is at wagganwagon.org. Uh, um, but of course, MCAT has our Saturday drop ins every single Saturday until the end of May. So every Saturday from 1 to 5 p.m., MCAT hosts a Saturday stop animation drop in where kids get to create with Legos, um, drawings. They basically make going to make their stop animation movies come to life. But we also do, it's basically movie making, it's media arts at MCAT for kids who want to do it. And we have plenty of space for them as well. Um, family Clay Workshop is happening at 2 p.m. at the Clay Studio of Missoula. Create something special for your loved one. The Clay Studio of Missoula Affordable Family Workshop, a perfect weekend for activities for adults and children to get together. From 2 to 5 p.m., April 7th, um, April, no, April 7th, April 28th, June 3rd, and July 15th, August 5th, September 9th, all hosting it at the um, Families Clay Workshop and this is going to be the um, spring season going into the summer and maybe uh, some in the fall as well. And you can always check the days that are happening. But, of course, the one that's happening is tomorrow more, tomorrow afternoon from 2 to 5 p.m. And then again, April 28th. And I'll probably talk about it again by then. Opportunity Resource Gala 2018. Celebrate the folks at Opportunity Resource at 6 p.m. at the Double Tree Hotel. The organization is helping uh, dedicate to supporting persons with disabilities and enhancing their quality of life. Their goal is to support their clients in attaining independence in housing and employment and many aspects of their daily lives as possible. So you guys can check that out and support support them, meet them, and just kind of see uh, what they do and learn more about them. It's a great uh, resource uh, and it's a great opportunity. Um, <laughs> Star Wars The Last Jedi is going to be at Painting with a Twist tomorrow night. Limited time, come in, stencil provided, um, guided instruction, and you can't go wrong. It's ba stencil, which basically means you uh, color in. It's a coloring book. It's a, a very advanced coloring book. Anyways, that's happening at Painting with a Twist at 7 p.m. And again, Wonder Woman last performance will be tomorrow night at 8 p.m. at the Park TV Building Room 005. But anyways, here's a nice little brief rundown of some of your late night events for your, let's see, maybe I'll just kind of like gloss over this. Um, there is Peter Frampton at the Wilma. If you don't know who that is, neither do I. Uh, night at the Roxy is going to be an, at the Roxy, and it's community event, special event. It's a fundraiser for the Roxy Theater. Charles Ellsworth is going to be at the VFW, Bear Bay Dance again. Letter B is going to be at VFW. Idle Ranch Hands is going to be the Union Club. It's going to be country music. 406 is going to be at the Sunrise Saloon. Um, the Hasslers at the Top At. Sorry, Idle Ranch Hands, it sounds like country music, but I'm pretty sure it's just going to be a jam band. Um, so Union Club, uh, and of course Top Hat has the Hasslers at the Top Hat. Uh, let's see. And of course, uh, tomorrow night 
if you're interested in going out and about tomorrow night as well, Diplo will be at the Wilma. So the Wilma's doing a lot of things happening the next two nights with Peter Frampton and then Diplo. Diplo is basically just like DJ music that goes mch, mch, mch a lot. So uh, <laughs> I'm not really impressed by DJ music. I'm sorry. Just plug in an iPhone. Who cares? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is terrible. <laughs> this is terrible. Okay, Latin Dance Nights um, um, is happening at the Downtown Dance Collective. If you like Latin dance and you like to get really close to that special dancing partner, then that's the place to be. Um, ten years is going to be rock music at the Top Hat Lounge. Hopefully it's not ten years long being there. Uh, Missoula Local Folklore Society Contra Dance is going to be at the Union Hall starting at 8 p.m. tomorrow night. Um, Liquor Down, a special blend of rock and roll. It's going to be at Monks. Absolutely, it was going to be at Ballander DJ Music again. Um... Uh, karaoke by Kaleidoscope, so you do some karaoke at the VFW tomorrow night. 406 is continuing their two-night two run at the Sunrise Saloon. Mudslide Charlie will be playing at the Union Club starting at 9.30 p.m. And that is your rundown for some of the events that are happening this weekend as well. Of course, there's the 2008 International Festival at the University of Montana on Sunday. So I'm just going to kind of give you a brief rundown like that. So the whole idea is this. If you're interested in trying new things, the International Festival at the university's University Center is the place to be. You get to try all sorts of food made by the uh, folks from around the world. So you got some Japanese exchange students. They make some authentic Japanese food. Um, and also you have some people from uh, the Middle East. Uh, you got a lot. Of, uh, it's just a whole bunch of people. You got uh, the Irish folks who make some traditional Irish meals as well. It's not just one or the other. There's a lot of ethnic food trucks from all from around trucks from around Missoula. And it's two dollars general admission, five dollars for family. And you, you students get in free for it with a valid ID. So that's kind of your uh, rundown for the University of Montana 2018 International Festival at the University of Montana. And it's going to be at the University Center Center. So check it out. And you can find out more events by oh, by logging on to uh, MissoulaEvents.net. Well, my computer froze. So thanks, guys. <laughs> thanks for joining me. And if you want more information about Wake Up Missoula, you can go on to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula. If you're interested in finding out more about MCAT, we want your input, and you, we want you to take a survey. So you can take that survey by going on to mcat.org. But thanks for joining me, and I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. It's snowing. Can't do anything about that, so um, it's, it's just, it just really sucks. All right, anyways, thanks for joining me. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramph. I hope you guys have a wonderful weekend. Mm -hmm.